What's good everybody, this is Robo from All Bark, back with another college football video, and today I'm giving you my week 8 picks. Last week was a rough one for me as it took a big run in the late games to get me over 500 on the week. A ton of upsets and crazy finishes last week, which was really exciting, but also hurt us a bit. Overall, I was 28-27 and against the spread and 12-9 and in the toss-up games, which brings the season total to 203, 155, and 5 pushes, and 59-31 and on the toss-ups. Best bets went 2-3 and three again, bringing the overall record to 4-6 and six through 2 weeks of doing them. Not the greatest, so let's hope for a better week and get started picking games starting with Tuesday night. Tuesday night starts off week 8 with 3 games again starting with Liberty hosting Middle Tennessee State. Liberty stands at 6-0 on the season and rolled on the road last week. They're back at home and the much better team in this matchup. I've got them covering this one with a 35-17 final score. Next up Tuesday we've got Western Kentucky as a road favorite at Jacksonville State. Matchup wise I kind of like the Jacksonville State defense here at home to be able to keep them in the game. As long as they play a clean game offensively, I think they cover this one, but I think Western Kentucky pulls out a close win, 30-27. Tuesday's third game is South Alabama hosting Southern Miss. South Alabama's had their up and downs this season, but are by far the better team in this one, as the spread shows. I'm not sold Southern Miss can slow down the Jaguars in this spot, so I'm going to go with South Alabama big, 38-17. Wednesday, we've got two more games, starting with winless Sam Houston State hosting Florida International. Despite that zero win total in the season, Sam Houston enters this one as a favorite, partially due to how they've looked in recent weeks. The lone bright spot of the season so far has been the defense, and I think that continues as they pick up their first win of the year this week at home, 27-20. The late game on Wednesday brings us UTEP and New Mexico State, another ugly game between two bad teams. Even after last week's hot start, I'm still not a believer in this UTEP team. I like New Mexico State to get the road win in this one with a 28-24 final. Thursday night, we've got Tulsa and Rice facing off. I think Rice continues to have a lot of issues on the defensive side of the ball in this one. Tulsa struggled last week up against FAU, but this is a better spot here at home, and I think they pull out a victory this week, beating Rice 31-27. James Madison snuck into my personal top 25 this week as they remain undefeated on the season in an impressive fashion. This is a huge test, though, on the road against a competent Marshall offense, but I'm going to keep rolling with the James Madison wagon here as they should be able to move the ball against this defense and get a solid road win, 31-23. Just one game Friday night with SMU at Temple. Temple's been a dumpster fire this year defensively and has some question marks at quarterback with EJ Warner surprisingly missing last week's game. If he's out again, I would be shocked to see them keep this one close. And regardless, I'm going to go with SMU big, 38-17. By far the biggest game of the week is the first game of the Saturday slate with Ohio State hosting Penn State in a game with massive playoff and Big Ten implications. This one's probably going to come down to minimizing mistakes under pressure. Two first-year starting quarterbacks in the biggest game of their careers at this point. Both offensive lines have had some struggles at times this year, and both defensive lines are loaded with talent. In my opinion, whoever wins the battle in the trenches will come out on top in this one. I think it goes down to the wire regardless, though, but I've got the Buckeyes holding on to another close victory at home, 27-24. Oklahoma is back off the bye week, taking on UCF. John Reese Plumlee is back starting at quarterback for UCF, although I'm not sure he's 100% ready to go. Typically, this would be a hangover spot for the Sooners, but I think that bye week could have helped mitigate that. I think Oklahoma continues to look like a top 5 team in the country this week and rolls over UCF 41-21. Air Force is undefeated and looking incredible with that rushing attack and dominating defense right now, and they'll be tested this week up against another academy team on the road at Navy. With how dominant Air Force has looked so far, I can't side against them right now, although I wouldn't be surprised to see Navy give them a little bit of fight early, but I've got the Falcons winning again 31-14. Arkansas was on the verge of getting blown out last week at Alabama, but found some fight and kept it a game, losing by only three points. They're back at home this week against a Mississippi State team that has looked even worse than Arkansas this season. I think Arkansas can use that near comeback as some momentum to pick up a much-needed win here, 31-21. Rutgers is back on the road at Indiana this week after an incredible fourth-quarter comeback to pick up their fifth win of the season against Michigan State. This Rutgers team looked hungry for a bowl berth, and Indiana is next in their way. The Hoosiers' lack of offense up against a solid Rutgers defense is enough for me to side with the Knights getting bowl eligible this week. I'll go with a 27-20 final for win number 6. Georgia Tech got the craziest win of the season two weeks ago and are back off a bye to host Boston College. Haynes King struggled against Miami through the air, but this is a much different defense. I think Georgia Tech wins this one by at least a touchdown. I'll go with a 34-24 final score. Next up is Cincinnati hosting Baylor as two-point favorites. I did not see last week's struggle coming as Cincinnati's been pretty unlucky this year but got absolutely dominated last week by Iowa State. Emory Jones just has to be better and I think this Baylor defense might be the right spot for him to get it going. I'm going to take Cincinnati again this week in a close one at home, 28-23. Memphis at UAB should be a good one this week with a tight spread at 4.5. I think Memphis's offense could put up a ton of pressure on UAB as that defense has really struggled this season. I like Memphis to come away with a solid road victory here, 34-27. Ohio's coming off a rough road loss to Northern Illinois, but gets a big bounce back spot here against Western Michigan at home. They've got an obvious advantage on both sides of the ball this week and could put up some points here. I like Ohio to get back with a big win at home, 35-17. 
East Carolina and Charlotte face off at the bottom of the AAC this week. Both teams are 1-5, looking for their first conference wins of the year. Neither team has shown any offensive consistency to this point. However, I think ECU has an advantage here with a better defense and in their home stadium. This could be a really ugly game, but I like ECU 28-17. Georgia Southern takes on UL Monroe this week after getting thumped by James Madison on Saturday. Both teams are coming off losses, but ULM by a heartbreaker. I think they come out hungry in this one and at least keep it close. I'm going to take Georgia Southern to get the win, but not enough to cover, 34-23. Bowling Green is back home for the first time in four weeks this week against Akron, who has lost five straight games. I don't think this Akron team is truly as bad as the record shows, although definitely not good by any means. But I think they can defend well enough to stay in this game for a while and keep it a close finish. But I'm going to take Bowling Green here at home, 24-20. Oregon is fresh off a heartbreaker last week to Washington and may be out for blood this week against Cam Ward on Washington State who just got embarrassed at home by Arizona. I can see this one going down the same way although I still believe in the Cougars enough to think they won't get blown out here again. But they don't have much of a shot to win this one. I'm going to go with a 38-21 final for the Ducks. We've got another top 25 matchup with Tennessee heading out to Tuscaloosa. Alabama looked pretty strong in the first half last week against Arkansas, but they lost control and let them back in the game late. I think they get up and stay up for this one after last year's loss to a much more talented Tennessee offense. The spread is a bit scary, but I think Alabama takes this one by 10 thanks to a strong defensive performance, 27-17. Missouri hosts South Carolina fresh off a dominant road win at Kentucky. Completely unexpected by me as Kentucky could not stop the Missouri offense and got out of their game plan offensively. But Missouri's back at home against a desperate South Carolina team that has not impressed. As long as Brady Cook continues to play well and Missouri gets pressure on Rattler, they should win this one 34-24. Tulane is back in the top 25 this week after a road win at Memphis, and they'll take on one of the worst defenses in the country with North Texas. But don't sleep on the mean green offense as they can put up some points as well. This one could be up there with a total, but I like Tulane to get an easy win at home 41-24. Iowa got a big win last week in Camp Randall over Wisconsin, and they're back at Kinnick this weekend against Minnesota. The Iowa defense is just so dominant, it's going to take an incredible performance by the Gopher offensive line to move the ball consistently in this one. I'd expect another low-scoring win for Iowa, as I've got them by a touchdown here, 20-13. Wisconsin at Illinois looks much different now compared to a week ago, as Illinois got a shocking win on the road against Maryland, and Wisconsin lost Tanner Mordecai to a broken hand. The one thing Wisconsin's favor is that Mordecai wasn't doing much regardless and the run game is their identity. But Johnny Newton is a game wrecker for the Illinois D-line, so this one could be fun, but I just can't trust that Illini offense to do it again this week up against a strong defense. I'm going to take the Badgers 24-21 on the road. Northwestern heads down to Nebraska with both teams at 3-3 three and, three and off a of bye week looking to refocus. This is a must win for Nebraska's bowl hopes as Northwestern's the worst remaining team on the schedule. I think the Hussars come out strong defensively just like the Illinois game two weeks ago and grab a win this week 30-17. South Florida at UConn is an interesting one with both teams heading in opposite directions. South Florida giving up 56 points in back-to-back -back weeks and UConn being one point away from back-to-back -back wins before the bye. I think this UConn team could be turning things around after this bye week and continue the strong performance this week as they grab a close win at home as an underdog 31-27. Pitt had been awful for most of the season this year until last week's game against Louisville where they pulled off a shocking upset with a different quarterback. For Wake Forest this season, it is not going to plan at all, especially last week getting blown out by Virginia Tech. It's hard to trust them to win this game even at home, but I'm going to take Wake in a close one, 24-21. West Virginia suffered one of the most painful losses possible as they gave up a last second Hail Mary after an emotional comeback. So the way they respond is going to be huge in this game against a surging Oklahoma State team. Luckily for West Virginia, they're back at home, and I think they'll be able to pick up a tough win this week to bounce back, 27-23. Back to some Matt games as Ball State hosts Central Michigan as a home underdog. Central hasn't looked good at all in recent weeks, but Ball State is sitting there at 1-6. Tough to trust either team in this one, but I'm going to side with Ball State at home in an upset for just their second win of the year with a 24-23 final score. Eastern Michigan hits the road at Northern Illinois, who just got a massive home win against Ohio. That was pretty surprising to me, and now this spread sits pretty high because of that performance, and I think EMU's defense is not far off from NIU in a talent perspective. I like Eastern to cover in a loss on the road with a 28-20 final score for the Huskies. Again in the MAC, we've got Buffalo at Kent State. Two really struggling teams outside of the Central Michigan game for Buffalo. Kent State has the worst offense in the FBS, but might be able to put together some stops against Buffalo to stay in this one. I think a 7.5 point spread is a bit high, as I've got Buffalo winning by just one score, 27-21. Texas is in a prime get-back spot on the road against Houston. This is a classic wrong place, wrong time scenario for the Cougars after the Oklahoma loss and bye week for Texas. A week to clear the mind and fix what went wrong in that game and come back hungry and improved. I think Texas takes out some frustration and wins this one big, 41-13. Toledo at Miami, Ohio is the game of the week in the MAC. This one may have MAC title implications as it's probably the two best teams in the conference. 
Toledo enters with a slight road favorite, but I think Miami's defense is strong enough to slow down the Rockets' rush attack. And Miami has an advantage in the run game on offense as well to help pick up a massive home win in what could be an incredible game, 28-24. Frank Harris and the UTSA Roadrunners are looking great as of late, and we'll head over to FAU, who absolutely dominated South Florida last week with a huge game from Daniel Richardson in place of Casey Thompson. I think UTSA is the better team of the two, though, and as long as they stay away from turnovers, could control the game enough to come away with a big road win in this one, 31-27. Hawaii hits the road to New Mexico to take on the Lobos. I think if this one was played in Hawaii, I'd comfortably take the Warriors, but that long travel distance causes some pause here on the road. I still lean towards Hawaii as road underdogs, though, as Braden Shaker should be able to throw the ball all over the Lobo defense to keep him in front. I've got them winning a tight one here, 30-28. North Carolina has become a wagon as of late, picking up massive wins over Syracuse and Miami at home to remain undefeated. This week they're home again, taking on Virginia as massive favorites, and I think they've shown the ability to both score and defend at a high level, which has me thinking this one won't be remotely close. I've got the Tar Heels cruising to a 41-17 win in this one. Auburn hosts number 13 Ole Miss this week in desperate need of an upset win, sitting at just 3-3 on the year after three straight losses. Ole Miss is fresh off a of bye week after back-to-back -back SEC wins, including that big one over LSU. It's hard to think anything positive of this Auburn group right now, as even in the night game, I don't know how they'll be able to pull off an upset, as I've got Ole Miss coming away with a 31-24 victory. Texas Tech at BYU could be a really solid game, with both teams coming off blowout losses last week looking for a bounce back. Texas Tech quarterback Baron Morton is a game-time decision this one, so that can definitely sway my opinion in this game, as they were not the same team without him last week. The backup quarterback threw three interceptions on consecutive drives, which lost them that game. If Morton plays, I like Texas Tech here, 30-24. But if not, I would stay away from this one. TCU may have found something in Josh Hoover at quarterback in place of Chandler Morris as they absolutely dominated BYU last week and now head out to Kansas State in a potential revenge spot after last year's Big 12 championship game loss. Kansas State has been the better team to this point, but we've seen some rough ones from Will Howard. I think Kansas State gets the win in this one though, but it'll be close. I'm going to go 31-27 Wildcats. Appalachian State is on the road this week at Old Dominion. The Mountaineers are near touchdown favorites in this one, and I wouldn't be surprised if Old Dominion gives them a challenge here. Night game road atmosphere, and Old Dominion has had their moments this season covering in four of their last five. I think App State gets the win, though, 28-24. Coastal Carolina heads to Arkansas State this week as 10-point favorites. I've been behind Grayson McCall a lot this season and still trust him to get the job done, especially after last week's upset win at App State. They've got an 11-day break between games, and they should be fresh and ready to pick up another win here, 35-23. UNLV still has not lost a game besides number two Michigan and Ann Arbor, and I think that continues this week as they'll host Colorado State, who's coming off an unbelievable comeback win over Boise State. They were absolutely dominated for 95% of that game last week, though, and UNLV is definitely aware of that game, and I don't think they'll be laying down until the game is over in this one. I'm going to take UNLV here, 31-23. San Jose State takes on Utah State at home this week under the lights. This could be a tough one for San Jose State, as Utah State matches up pretty similar to them, just at a faster pace. I think Utah State has the ability to pull off an upset here, but I don't think they're able to here on the road at night. I'm going to take San Jose State in a close one, 34-31. Michigan heads up to East Lansing for a big-time rivalry game against Michigan State. We've seen some crazy things in this rivalry, but this is one of the most lopsided matchups we've had in a long time. Michigan State looked better last week with Caden Hauser at quarterback, but there's not much room for success up against this Michigan defense. I do think MSU is able to get some points on the board as they're home in a night game with some playmakers. But Michigan should get a hold of this one before halftime, and they will not let up. I think Michigan leaves East Lansing with a 38-13 win, keeping the Paul Bunyan Trophy at home. Florida State will host Duke in a big-time ACC matchup that could be a good one. Riley Leonard's questionable for this game this weekend, and that would be a massive for Duke's chances in this one. Without him, Duke was still good last week, but he can be a game-changer for that offense. I think he'll do everything in his power to be able to suit up for this one, and Duke is able to cover the spread, but falls short in a rowdy atmosphere. 30-20 in favor of the Seminoles. LSU absolutely embarrassed Auburn last week and gets a nice breather this week against an Arby team that failed to score a point against Troy last week. LSU's had some defensive struggles but looked improved in that area and could hold Army to almost nothing again. I've got LSU coming away with a big win at home under the lights, 45-10. Another potential game of the week contender comes with Utah heading down to USC. Utah took down Caleb Williams and the Trojans twice last season, but that was with Cam Rising who continues to miss game after game with little to no updates before kickoff. If Cam is out again, as expected, I think USC is due for a bounce-back win after Notre Dame and both losses last year. I'm going to take USC to get right here against a tough defense at home, 31-24. Miami is now off back-to-back -back losses with Georgia Tech and North Carolina and desperately needs to get back on track but has Clemson coming to town. They're going to need a great atmosphere in this one as outside of the Wake Forest game, this Clemson team has looked improved and is off a of bye week to prepare. I think this one could go down to the wire regardless of who comes out on top, but I think Miami's defense can cause some problems for Kay Klubnik this week and pull off a slight home upset under the lights, getting Miami back in the win column, 28-27 in the thriller. 
Louisiana hosts Georgia State Saturday night in a cross-division Sunbelt battle. Both teams will look strong this season and have some playmakers on offense. I think Louisiana has the edge defensively here, which can definitely help their case in a home night game. And I think that can propel them to a close win in this one, 34-28. Nevada heads to San Diego State still in search of their first win. And up against the Aztecs, it probably isn't coming this week. I trust Jalen Maiden and the Aztecs to be able to control this game from start to finish as Nevada's defense has given up over 500 yards per game this season. I've got San Diego State in this one, 35-20. Washington just picked up one of the best wins of the season so far against Oregon, cementing Michael Penix's status as current Heisman favorite and putting themselves in the top five of the AP poll. This week, they'll take on Arizona State under the lights in a game that shouldn't be close whatsoever unless Washington gets ahead of themselves. I think they've got their goals in mind, though, and play dominant football and grab a 45-17 win. The last game of the night is another Pac-12 matchup with UCLA heading out to Stanford. Stanford off an incredible comeback win over Colorado thanks to one of the best performances we'll see this season from Alec Ayo Manor. I do think the Stanford offense comes back down to earth, though, against a much stronger UCLA group, especially on that defensive line. And Dante Moore looks much sharper this week as the Bruins grab this one 37-17 on the road. All right, it's best bet time, and I'm in need of a good week here as I'm just 4-6 and six through two weeks of these. But I'm confident in these five games getting us right this week, starting with Georgia Tech over Boston College. I think that week off will really help them settle in after the Miami upset, and they've looked solid all year besides the Bowling Green game where they kept turning the ball over. I trust Haynes King at home against a fairly below-average defense to get the job done this week. Ohio at home over Western Michigan is a perfect bounce back spot this week and I like them to win this one comfortably. Coming off a road loss where they threw three interceptions and couldn't get anything rolling against one of the better defenses of the MAC. I think Ohio puts together one of their best offensive games of the season this time against a really weak Western Michigan defense and I don't see Western being able to move the ball well in this one at all. Missouri taking down South Carolina is another one of my best bets this week. I just don't see Spencer Rattler being able to pick up a huge row win this week against a Missouri team that's really impressed this season. Brady Cook and those weapons just have too strong of a matchup against a South Carolina defense. It may not matter how well Rattler plays in this one. Next, I've got Iowa over Minnesota as one of my favorites this week. This line has creeped down enough that I'll be surprised if Iowa didn't cover. Minnesota has a pretty strong run game, but as we know, Iowa's defense is absolutely dominant and slowed down Wisconsin last week on the road. I don't see much success out of Minnesota's offense this week, and as long as Iowa can put together a few solid drives against a decent defense, I think they'll take this game by at least a touchdown. If you can get off that hook spot and grab three, I love this spot for Iowa. My fifth and final best bet of the week is going to be UCLA on the road over Stanford by more than 16.5. I think Stanford's offense was a bit of a fluke last week against a really poor Colorado defense and a gas Travis Hunter. As long as Dante Moore protects the football, they should win this one with ease on the road. That's it for my week 8 picks. I'm in need of a big week here to make up for last week, barely seeking above 500 thanks to those late games. As always, let me know your favorite picks down in the comments below as well as which games you're most excited to watch any other predictions you have. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.